I've just realised my name's Caroline Moss on the uh, Zoom chat, so I probably should change that. So I've, uh, I've done that now, so we're fine. Um, <laughs> okay, so hello, everybody. We hope you are, and your families are keeping safe and well at this time. Um, my name's Dominic Reed. I'm the Marketing Manager at Elmhurst Energy. And I'd just like to welcome you to a new video series called Elmhurst Discuss. Um, so during this series, we're just going to be discussing some of the most interesting topics um, coming from our industry. And I'm uh, joined by some of the heavy hitters from Elmhurst today. We've got uh, Managing Director Martin Reed and the Technical and Operations Director Stuart Fairley. Uh, how are you both today? Very well, thank you, Dom. Thank yep. you. I'm a bit heavier than I was six weeks ago, but that's about the only difference is heavy <laughs> I fulfill, I think. Um, so today, what we'll be discussing is uh, what does energy mean? Um, quite a broad topic. I'm sure all of you will be sort of agreeing with that. Um, we're happy for anyone watching this video to kind of share their views or comments and their opinions on this uh, topic. And we're going to be uploading it to our YouTube channel. Um, so you can comment and like and there. And um, also feel free to subscribe as well, because we, we hope to bring some more videos um, similar to this on our YouTube channel in the near future as well. Um, so I will begin now by asking the first question. And um, when I, what words come to mind when someone mentions energy? And I'll leave that open to both of you. Whoever wants to speak first. <laughs> Do you want to start, Stuart? Uh, yeah, no, I don't mind. Um, I, I think when people ask me about energy, it's it's a big, it's a big, big topic. But I've, I've sort of worked in this sector for as many know for over twenty years, and, and and I sort of bring it back at simplest level because that's what I can cope with. But I think it's about the energy that a building needs to operate to use. The users within the building will use X amount of energy, and 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 I, I sort of always lead it back into the built environment, which is is kind of what I know and understand. And I think probably beyond that, um, I, I'd be a sort of I'd be lying to you if I said I understood it wider than that. But that's where I can concentrate and help people. And certainly that's where uh, Elmhurst I think sits. Yeah, and that's obviously our focus, isn't it? Um, Dom asked about words that, that I think of when I think of energy. It's a necessary. You know, we've got to have energy. Um, it's scarce, and, and and it's not it's finite, isn't it? The, the, it will. It, if, if mineral um, fossil fuels and the like aren't going to run out one day um, and it's very expensive and and increasingly more so so that leads us I guess to, to using that energy efficiently which is obviously what Elmas is all about energy efficiency and uh, why would you think why is it uh, so important um, I think it's incredibly important because you, you basically want and we all want everybody knows that what they want they want the buildings and homes and businesses to use as little energy as possible because if they use as little energy as possible you've got this wide sort of plethora of of benefits you know the the the, the occupants save money the nation produces less co2 they produce less co2 or carbon emissions and you don't have to build as many sort of power stations so the idea of if as martin said if it's a finite resource you want to use it as little as possible um then obviously there's some huge benefits to that but i suppose it gets quite important that you also don't want to use so little that everyone's really cold in the house for example it's, it's there's a there's a fine line between how healthy living in a building so i think energy efficiency is incredibly important and everything we talk about with climate change it's part of the conundrum so. I think I think I think you're right. Obviously, and and I think this is one of the complexities with energy efficiency. It means so many things to so many different people. Um, energy efficiency is obviously using the minimum amount of fuel, but you can't do that at the expense of people dying. And 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 therefore, to some people, actually, energy efficiency is about cost. Um, energy efficiency can also be about using scarce resources as as efficiently as possible so that they don't run out and obviously that's very valid to some people it's about climate change and emissions and that's also energy efficiency and and you know Stuart and I you know often debate about this sometimes people come from a particular perspective and they get themselves tied in a little bit of a knot really that what what they mean by energy efficiency is not necessarily what everybody else is talking about in energy efficiency and I think ultimately we all want the same thing but we just need to be careful about the perspective we're coming from and, and and understanding that not everybody is coming from that same perspective so would you i mean you've you mentioned there sort of two a lot of different perspectives from different people so would you say energy is more about saving money or is it more about saving emissions is there one right answer uh, no 
I think they are. I genuinely, I don't think there is. I, you know, as Martin said, I've been in so many meetings and so many, and and everybody's heart is 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 correct. They're all talking about an energy efficient building or use of energy in a, in a wise way. Um, but uh, uh, there is no right answer. There's no uh, people refer to it as a magic bullet to solve this problem. And there isn't because as Martin rightly said, if I speak to some people, it will all be about, I need to save money. I, I have not got enough money to heat my home. So we need to reduce that. Whereas other people will see it as energy used in the building. They'll use what was referred to as kilowatts of energy. And then other people will talk about climate change. Well, they're all right. There's no one that's wrong. <laughs> but the problem is some of those dynamics aren't the same. So if you were to use less of this energy, it's great, but actually it might be more expensive. And so the fuel bill goes up and then you'd have people talking about fuel poverty, which would say, well, that's not the right thing to do because you've used less energy, but you put the fuel price up. And, and so the conundrum is quite, dyn it, it, it works on different levels. And, but as I said, I think most of the people that we ever touch upon, certainly at Elmhurst and the government departments and all our energy systems, we're all trying to do the right thing. Unfortunately, it's just like you said, trying to spin lots of plates and sort of virtually seeing them and saying which one's the most important. And I think the argument is none of them. They all are as important, but we just have to choose the right path for the right person in the right building. Um, and that would help, I think. Well said, Jenny, nothing to add to that. That's good. No, no. So is there anyone who's right in this sort of debate? Is anyone that's saying, <laughs> this is probably a very open question, but is, is anyone right in that, in that debate in terms of um, energy? And I think Stuart can probably explain why the decision was made, but rightly or wrongly, 10, 15 years ago, when, when, when EPCs were first being talked about, there was a general assumption that actually consumer behaviour would be modified most um, um, directly by talking about cost. And uh, therefore the EPC is basically a function of cost. And as Stuart said, you'll get people who come from a sort of climate change perspective and they will then look at technology which they believe is more energy efficient because it is reducing the um, um, primary energy going into a building. Um, whilst at the same time, the costs are going up because at the moment electricity is cheap. It may be uh, have a low carbon intensity than, than, than other fuels, but it is expensive. And therefore the EPC either gets worse or stays the same and they're disappointed because they think what they've done is an energy efficient solution. So I think everybody likes to keep things simple wherever they can. And people talk about energy efficiency of a building being an EPC rating. And because of that decision that was made 10, 10 15 years ago, that then becomes a function of cost. And I think probably it is a complicated scenario. And in an attempt to, over, to simplify it to that level, we may have oversimplified it. And actually, we need to make a step back. And I'm not suggesting that everybody needs to be um, uh, physicists and understand um, um, every dynamic of, 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 of energy measurement. Um, but there needs to be some sort of labeling system, some way of actually presenting energy efficiency in the three primary drivers of, of cost, energy and emissions. Yeah, if, if those are the only three, Martin, aren't they? That's the problem, isn't it? Yeah. You know, then you'd start to talk about the warmth in the building, the health of the, the property. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. don't blame me, by the way, that the EPC ended up on a cost base, if that's anybody's inference of the of the question. Um, it, it, it was decided at the time that actually it'd have two measures. The domestic EPC we're talking about here it would have a carbon rating and a, and, a, and a cost rating. And after a little while, the government decided that it was confusing to consumers that they couldn't understand the two different scales moving up and down and different fuels. Um, so they removed the carbon one and left it on the cost. That's for domestic houses, by the way, on commercial buildings, they're, they're, they're carbon rating, but that's park that for the moment so so subtly you've got these different ratings going around and like you said everybody then gets a little bit confused and muddled what what it's trying to achieve you know your house gets better on the cost-based approach um so i i think martin's right i mean you, you guys we, we've had these debates within elmhurst ourselves and we've written articles about maybe the idea is just to give all of the ratings as martin said and I, I refer to as food labeling where you should use your carbohydrates and whatever it is. They've got to that concept that you actually display all three or four or whatever it is. And you let people decide or you let policies, you know what I mean? To piggyback on the back of those. So don't hide them. Don't put them only one. Um, but I think, I think to be fair, I think most people probably say that the most important driver for consumers and when they talk about the house bill, I think probably still is price. It is how much you pay to the utility company. Yeah. Um, it's still a motivator, but we want yeah, to raise and think, yeah and i think to move away from cost as as the sort of the, the, the uh, they're all important but some are more important than, than others <laughs> um uh the 
the, 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 so much legislation now around the, the sort of the fuel poverty sector with minimum energy efficiency standards, and they're talking about owner occupied standards in Scotland, um, and obviously what the, the standards that apply in social housing, that actually to move away from cost as at least one of the top level measures, I think is going to be really difficult now, and probably it needs to be preserved but what we need to give is more prominence to to, to to those other measures so that people can make a balanced judgment and understand what's happening with their cost um Stuart you make quite a good analogy sometimes with the food industry don't you and, and how they have sort of wrestled with this um conundrum when it comes to what is good food and what is bad food do you want to just explain that a little bit well so i uh, just alluded there really that sort of the idea of them putting it onto the i, I was listening on the radio to a way to an, a conference and they talked about it and it was a real debate around whether and i didn't i was still confused whether i'd ate a healthy cereal in the morning or not because of all the different metrics you could measure it on and i was confused is sugar bad for me now is it not bad or actually is it carbohydrate should i be concentrating and obviously over time you know, they've accepted that all of those things you probably need in balance. And I think that's probably what we have to do about buildings. We need a balanced approach to what that building needs to be occupied in a healthy manner. Um, um, so, yeah, I think that, like you said, that sort of food labeling context. I like the red, amber and green yeah. sort of approach really keeps it simple. It's yeah. not very good on this one, but it's actually quite good on that. And you say, well, I, I accept that because I've made that choice to put in that technology, which is good on this metric. Might not be so good on there, but if we, if we don't focus and, and, allow people to make those informed choices then we are like you said we're sort of open to criticism that we're only gone down the cost road and that's not what we want to achieve is it we want to have a good balance then. i think the analogy with food actually is probably a little bit more it's probably another depth than the one you just described yes the, it is important to get a balanced diet and that is obvious but obviously what the definition of healthy does vary by person somebody who's got diabetes what a healthy food is to them is somebody very different from somebody who's got weight problem or somebody else who's got some other health issue and what that allows people to do is focus on their definition of health which suits their context and there is an analogy i think with with energy efficiency when you want energy efficiency what is it you're trying to do is it you're trying to reduce fuel bills reduce carbon emissions or reduce energy consumption and 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 there is some some, some, some several parallels i think that actually there that could be very convenient for us going forward that actually they're all important but some are more important than others that was a very, very detailed answer. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> now, um, no, the food labeling thing is very interesting. We, we have got an article on our Elmhurst website. Um, so anyone watching this, feel free to go check that out because that actually explains what Martin and Stuart are kind of referring to there. It's all very, quite inter very interesting. Um, we will be covering more videos on the EPC and policies around that in future. Um, so do come back and watch some more of those videos. Um, have, have you two got any more things to add at all to what we've discussed today in terms of the meaning of energy? Or to Something else from me? No. No, I think to be fair, any of these videos, you could go on forever and ever about trying to discover it, it would be endless. I, I think just to salient, this is where we think we are, but like you said, other videos can delve deeper into certain things that will help. Oh, yes. Help that moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. And if anybody's got any ideas of what they want us to talk about, then we'll yeah feel free yeah yeah feel free to leave them like in the comment box where we're happy to kind of um take on board any anything you'd like us to discuss we'll, we'll hope to involve some more people from elmhurst as well some of the technical support teams so but uh, thank you very much Stuart and martin for joining us. thank you dom and, uh, thanks for organizing hopefully enjoy the rest you. of your day